Well, tech giants could soon be fined billions in a crackdown on fake news. The federal government working on legislation that would allow them to target companies like Facebook, Google and Twitter for spreading misinformation. Let's get today's take on this with journalist James Law and Nine Honey's Shelley Horton on the Gold Coast. Good morning to you both. Shelley, you first. Morning. What do you think about this? Is the Albanese government naive or ambitious perhaps in thinking that they can take on these companies? You know what? I'm glad that they're trying to do something mm. because I hate it when people go, oh, you can't go up against Facebook. They've got such deep pockets or, you you know, they'll just tie it up in court. At least give it a go because I think social media really, those platforms really do need to be held responsible for a lot of a lot of problems in society and one of the biggest problems is misinformation and fake news. So I think it might be hard legally to get this across the line but maybe we need to go back to the drawing board with social media and actually approach them on things like making sure that you can't have an anonymous account on social media because it's those anonymous accounts that are the ones that are spreading misinformation and are trolling. So I think if we bring it back to what could we control and maybe Maybe that is you have to show your ID before you get an account. Mm, good point. Uh, I mean, are fines, James, the way to go here? You look at the likes of Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg, they go, they're made of money. Is, mm. is financial pain going to really hit them? Well, look, probably not, but the reputational risk, I think, is the thing that really gets them because they've got to be a place that's like, comfortable for advertisers so if they you know if the government is able to make the case that they've got systemic problems with misinformation mm. which they do yeah. um, that's the thing that'll really get them and what annoys me about especially places like Facebook is they like to say we're just the platform we're not a publisher so we don't really have to be responsible for what's on there so I like that the government is making the point that yes you do have to be responsible for what's on your platform yeah for sure okay also making news this morning patients wanting to receive breast augmentations are being bamboozled apparently by medical jargon with new research suggesting the form should be written in year six level language. Um, Shelley, you first. The research suggests that the risks with this sort of surgery aren't clear enough when people are signing on the dotted line. So should that be fixed? What do you think about this approach? I think that it's always helpful to have all of the risks spelt out for you. I'd also like to say that I doubt anyone who's getting the boobs done is actually going to read all of the fine print. I know, I'm putting my hands up, I had lipo uh, and I didn't read all the risks, I didn't read all of that, I just signed it away because I want to get it done. What I wish that they had told me was don't get it done in 2019 when you'll be trapped in your house for a year and just put all the weight back on. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. That was annoying. I'm not but, sure yeah, that would I have think... been in the uh, waiver anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but I just think if you are going to get a boob job, you're going to get a boob job. I don't think even reducing it down to a year six level comprehension is going to make any difference because I don't know anyone who reads every single I page I, of that. I disagree with you on this and, and I say really? that because I've done a lot of stories with women who have had a lot of bad reactions to their breast implants and they a lot of them have said to me if they knew about this risk or they knew about that risk they wouldn't have done it in the first place and I think there's a big difference that people need to understand between cosmetic surgeons yes. and plastic surgeons too and the kind of the level of care you're getting at those different ends of the spectrum. Well, yes. SJ I agree with what you're saying mm. there but what I want to say is you're not getting these women because they're not reading the information you're getting them in, they're getting in trouble because they're seeing cosmetic surgeons Mm. not plastic surgeons, mm. and that is coming down to price. So I'm not sure how we're going to fix you this. You think they've already made up their mind. But, but the, the research actually backs you up, Sylvia, because apparently, like, if the more information you get, the more you understand, the less likely you are to get this surgery at all. Mm. And, you know, I was quite shocked with this story. I didn't know how risky these procedures are. The doctor in this article said that if you got um, breast augmentation in your, in your mid-20s, there is pretty much a 100% chance that you will need another surgery in your lifetime due to risks. Within 10 years. Within 10 years. Yeah. I had no idea. And I don't think yeah. people at that age do either. So, no. yeah, you've got you to you know what you're oh, about. I think it's yeah. got to be spelled out, definitely. It's be spelled out. Okay, Shelley and James, stay with us. When we come back, Kate Blanchett gets her... Well, she's an acting icon, but did you know she's also a dancing queen? Our Kate Blanchard, I'm talking about. She's made a special appearance at Glastonbury, of all places, for what's been dubbed one of her greatest performances to date. Take a look. So many
Wow. Let it all go, wow. Kay. Let Shelley it all go. Shelley and James are still with us. James, I'm a, oh, bringing yes. drunk auntie at Christmas fun <laughs> vibes here. What's ah, doing? Yeah, well, I think this is her next Oscar performance, <laughs> right? <laughs> let's, let's give her the third. She deserves it. Um, I, I, I bloody love Kate Blanchett. I mean, here she is. Oh, oh. <laughs> Wow, she put a back out. Actor, actor at the top of her game, but this is where she shows her Aussiness, oh, no. still willing to take the piss out of herself. I love it. Don't you love it? It's somewhere between Uma Thurman, Pulp Fiction, and Elaine yes. Dennis Seinfeld for me. <laughs> it's just. Oh, it's well, all it's, of those it's great not just the limbs, it's her face as well. Look at how serious she is. How, I know. <laughs> how does this make you feel, Shelley? Oh my God, she is the coolest. She is the absolute coolest. And I don't think it's daggy dancing. I think it's actually incredibly cool. So I'm gonna lean towards the Uma Thurman Pulp Fiction yeah. side because to get up in front of that many people, keep the straight <laughs> face and have all of those movements happening. I mean, seriously, you say dance like no one's watching, the whole world's watching. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. I think that's where the real entertainment was there. If you happen to yeah. get a glance of the faces of the people in the crowd, seeing her move, head. Yeah. It's, this, it's the it. shock and awe. It's the floating seagull for me. The, What's the that move? wings. <laughs> Someone said it's flapping. Like, that's it. You someone got said it's shell. like one got of those um, those inflatable guys, like in yeah. front of the car, oh. the car um, <laughs> dealers. Oh. Yeah. I walked into. Oh, look. I'm not going <laughs> to throw any stones today, when right. it comes to dance moves. Shell no Bell, way. Shelley, thank you very much, James. Yeah. Nice to see you yeah. guys. Thank you guys. See you later. <laughs> we'll dance their way out. Yeah, show yourself out. Keep floating in the breeze, guys. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Coming up, the Duchess of York.